<laughs> you guys finished with your conversation? Yeah. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the... <laughs> Snipe! Whoa! That's good. I don't care. We you don't need to do it. Do it. You, got, you got it. Oh, God. Go ahead. Do the intro. <laughs> What's going on, guys? <laughs> Welcome back to the Board and Scale podcast. It's your boy, D Money. We've got Kenzie. We've got Seabass. And we've got... Cabondrius. I hope you're ready to learn and talk about Rising Sun, baby. He put a B in there for Kevin's name. You're Cabondrius now. <laughs> As Dwayne introduced, we are the Come folks on, from on, the Board and Scale podcast. On, this episode is going to be the Battle of the Games for Rising Sun, which is Kevin's number zero. Three. Three. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to explain the game? Yes. So Rising Sun is Chaos. a area control uh political um combat game. Um it's a very much a dudes on the map game, but uh it pushes that quite a bit. Um each of the you got different factions, each of the factions are asymmetric. Um they have very different powerful abilities. Um each of the um the board is broken up into provinces. Um, you're trying to control those provinces depending on the number of players that you have. Those provinces may or may not be places that you fight over uh, at the end of each round. Um, there's a series of different actions you can you take by um, going through the mandate tiles. What is so funny? Guys. <laughs> It's one of those things where I guess. <laughs> Try not to be bothered by that noise. <laughs> Kevin's trying to you keep... Say, you go, after every like small sentence, you go, um... It's... Don't worry, guys. Kevin's trying to keep his dentures from falling out. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, it's because I ate those nerds. <laughs> Us? Yeah. Oh, shit, that was funny. <sighs> <laughs> it's going to have to... Where's my drink? My drink's over there. I was just waiting for the next. Mm. (laughs) All right. Well, I'm going to. Sheesh. Uh, You can't say that here. We're not laughing at the the action. We're laughing at the absurdity. I'm going to perform seppuku, which is a thing you can do in the game. (laughs) Yes. It is. Good segue. Good segue back into the topic. So the majority of the game is played by selecting mandate tiles. Um. One of the more interesting things about the game is, is that there's a very political aspect. You begin each phase um, of the game by doing tea ceremonies where you partner up uh, with another player, and that'll give you certain benefits uh, as you go throughout the rest of the, the mandate phase. Uh, there are also kami, uh, Japanese gods, that you can worship and get special benefits from. And um, the end of every one of those mandate phases... Um, you'll go into a combat phase. And the combat phase is, is resolved in order from province to province. And um, it's got a really neat system where you've got all of your, your coins and your Ronin uh, behind a little board. And you can select either perform seppuku, or you can actually kill off your own people. Um, you can take hostages. Um, I'm drawing a blank on the third one. Oh, hire Ronin. Uh, and then you resolve the battle, and then you can uh, also do Imperial Poets, which is the way you can actually gain points by having other people die or, or your people die. You get points for people dying. So um, for those people who are familiar with um, Stephen Lang's other games in this Eric trilogy. Lang. Eric Lang, sorry. Um, Stephen? His long-lost <laughs> brother, I guess. <laughs> yeah. um, he did um, Blood Rage uh, and Ankh, and I think if you've played Blood Rage, there's a lot of similarity with some of the play styles where like, dying is actually something that can be very useful in the game. Um, so you play through three different phases, um, doing the mandates and then the combat. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I'll, so I'll leave it at that. There we go. And I will go first. <laughs> One more for I'll the road. I'll leave us off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First off, spoiler alert. I, I won, won this game. Is it going to influence my rating of this? Most yes. likely. Yes. When I play this again and probably win again, will it change my ratings? We'll see. Will we ever play it again? It's yet to be decided by a certain somebody. Anyways, pros of this game for me. 
not normally I normally don't like bidding games, especially secret bidding, but the way that they use it here for some reason, it clicked for me and strategically obviously worked out for me because I won the game, but it didn't feel like I was bidding in a way that was just trying to make sure I would win something. I was actually dividing up my resources to really risk winning multiple things at a time. And I felt like for some reason, even if I didn't win one thing, I was probably likely going to win another one just based off of the game and who you're battling at any given time. And for my strategy that, that I ended up running with, it worked. Even if I only got one of the things, it was fine. So the secret bidding thing was not negatively affecting me. And in this case, I actually really enjoyed the fact that other players did not really know what I was going to do because sometimes I would have very limited resources, but I'd spread them out the right way and then win multiple things when I really shouldn't have. So that was really cool. And I think the secret bidding is one of the obviously one of the biggest pieces of it. Another thing I like, the action tiles, when it's your turn, you just get a stack of action tiles from the next amount of tiles that are there. And you have to deal with whatever you get. If you hear barking, that's our guard dogs. Yeah, people barking? outside the studio. <laughs> <laughs> to continue, <laughs> the action mechanism, the action selection mechanism, you just got to get what you, you know, or you got to deal with what you get. Bonus, the ally assist, the allying system, very cool. If you've played this game, you know what it is. If you haven't, really quickly, before a round starts, you can essentially partner with someone to share a benefit of a tile that you pick. There is also a betrayal mechanism in which you can break that alliance. I only suffered through that once when it was basically necessary for you guys to try and win the game. But otherwise, it was cool. And it kind of leads you to not completely hate everyone at the table because you got to make partnerships work at different times. Strategize a little bit. It's like a weird way to keep the, like, not king making, but king killing, I guess, a little more balanced because you're like, well, you're. I was very much in the lead from like the middle of the game and on. So not necessarily, uh, it didn't work out for me all the time, but like, Oh, that person's in the lead. Now they're doing really good in this area, or I can tell they're about to do really good in a certain set of combat. Let me partner with this person. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you anything. Anyways, the action selection, I liked the bidding for this game. I, it just worked for me. I normally don't the action selection mechanism, I liked the commies are the ones that are at the top that you get this other Kami, bonuses from. God, yeah. Yeah. Those are cool. I like that they're variable. They'll vary throughout the game. I like that in each era, the places that you battle vary depending on your players. You're not always going to get the same things. And that's pretty much it. The cons, sometimes people get really hurt. And you guys might hear about that, I know, you know, slightly after this. That's it. And then, well, really, second, secondary, if you're really in the lead, it just becomes obvious that everyone needs to team up against you. Didn't help them. I still won. That's honestly my only con. Otherwise, beautiful art. I had fun with the game. I won, so obviously plus. Uh, and I'm going to give it an eight. Me? Yep. Are you sure you want to start this? Start what? Me? This is not my game. Yeah. Sure. All right. Take it away. 10 out of 10. This is a 10 out of 10, guys. I feel like I you're lying to just me. Just kidding. <laughs> opposite day got in. Just <laughs> kidding. Yeah. Zero one. Opposite. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding all the way around. Anyway, so this game has a lot of elements that are not my favorite. <laughs> Moving Stay it away, away from my game. before I throw it. Yeah. No, this just game. This just, just game. game. This, just this game. game just has a lot of elements that are not <laughs> my thing. Like area control. Mm-hmm. Not my favorite. Designed by Stephen Lang. Who is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Eric. Pokey, fighty, not my thing. Hidden information, not my thing. Like, trying to get people to like you so you can be in alliances. Very like, tough working Kinsley. with people, not my thing. It all around just wasn't really my thing. But I will say, um, this is one of those games where it wasn't that bad. I like this one a lot more than Blood Rage. Blood Rage is a lot more pokey, a lot more mean. Um, 
even though my experience with this was not that great, um, I became an, um, a, what, what did you, what did you call me? Collateral damage. Collateral damage for Kevin to go after Sebastian. He took like 20 some points from me and I just couldn't do anything about it. And he just kept doing it. Um, it just like totally demotivated me and there was nothing that I could do. So it like. The Oni of spite is who, is who uh, was really hurting. It was just, it was just not a great experience. But overall, it wasn't that bad, if it makes sense. It could have been a lot worse. Granted, most components of the game are not my favorite. Um, but like I said, after we played it, it is not the worst of the worst. Um, I honestly would probably rather play this over Viticulture. <laughs> wow. Hey, That's low surprising. bar for Kenzie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, like, I'd rather, I'd rather play this than suck start a shotgun. Oh, man. Um, but it's a really pretty game. Like when you have all of the pieces out on the map and like that part of the map, like strategizing on where to put your people and getting all of the different tiles and the set collection. I really enjoy that part. That's really fun. Like choosing the different actions of what to play each round. Fantastic. The fighting each other. Not that great. The, fact the, the what? The fighting each other. Oh. Not yeah. that fun. Okay. Not that fun. Um, so I'd probably give it like a seven. It's not that bad. Cool. It's not horrible. I forgot to mention all the factions are asymmetric, slightly different. Also, a oh, big, also a big plus. I, did for me. I also that. had a horrible faction what for the? me. Her, I did not like my her, faction. Oh, you had the one where the Ronin. coins be Ronin. It is a harder one to play. Um, because you have to, you rely on getting Ronin and coins, or coins and Ronin, in order to make that work. Um, and if you did limits with your ability when you're doing, there are other cards in the game called um, training cards. You can get like monsters or virtues and other things like that. And when you're that um, clan, it can be very difficult because you're making uh, a choice: Do I want to get this this card, this monster, this thing that'll help me in another way, or do I want to have the ability to just have Ronin? So. It's, uh, it's you unfortunate. Lose bidding power. You lose you lose that power. Um, you did get some good cards that were like gain a bunch of money at the beginning of the no, battles. Yeah, it, I did. I was not doing bad. If you, I was actually doing really really well, and I got a lot of end game points. And I would have been extremely competitive if I didn't become the subject of collateral damage. I would think <laughs> if you don't get those cards, though, I could see that that you're like it's tough for that faction. Well, the good thing about that is that the His tail, uh, yeah. <laughs> We have a we have a, a four legged guest wagging his tail happily. <laughs> the the good thing is so when you're when you're building um, the cards for each game, there's a base set of cards for each season, and then you add an additional set to that. So the base always comes with those at the beginning of the war phase, gain X number of coins. That is a base part of the game, it'll never go away. Sta so sta it's the standard. So th there is a slight bit of standardization with those cards. It that needs are always to be available. with that faction. Without a, Hundred like, percent, and that is, I think, in large part, why it's there. Yeah, that but makes again, sense. it's also unfortunate though because, as the, um, I think it's the Koi Clan, right? Um, like you are forced to, to take those cards in order mm -hmm. to support your, um, your ability, where you know, other players have more latitude. You can to be take like, monsters, hey, I can go like for monsters the or spite. virtues. Or get, or get or get four virtues I went and then virtue crazy. I had the, the most virtuous mf -er on the board. The form of the kitsune, I think it was, is the one with the, the virtue one. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Dwayne, what do you think? If we could, if we based our scores <laughs> on plays, we're looking at a fat fucking zero. <laughs> <laughs> However, which was Dwayne's score I mean, at again, the end of the game? My fault. However, yes, we don't do that. We give games Kevin was mean scores to us. based on how good they are. <laughs> and this game is very good. I've played Rising Sun multiple times. I really like Rising Sun. Um, it easily has my favorite combat of the three, just because there's not a lot of like surprises. It's not mean. Like, like somebody can't just whip out a card that's like, well, fuck you. All right. Well, that's fun. It's like, you know what's coming more than likely. 
of course you have the bidding thing and people can just kill themselves and whatever um but, but it's can, my it's my favorite combat of the three for sure. What? You can still participate even if everybody's dead. Like in Blood Rage, if you if all your characters die, you're done. There's nothing that you can do about it. Yeah. If they're just like, oh, kill two guys and you only had two guys there, you're done. You're dead. No more. Any cards that you played that are gone now because pff, fuck you. Like. Yeah. I like that this game is not like that. I'm so sorry. It's also much more political, which I like. Um, it doesn't feel just combat oriented. Combat feels like the second thing. You're it's trying just a to, consequence. Yeah, like you're trying to um get. You're trying to reach out all of your places. You're trying to get virtues. Um, score points through that. Combat just kind of feels like, hey, we're in the same spot. Get out of here. Um. I also do like the ally, the team ceremony phase. Um, I don't really see betraying much. Every time I've played this, betraying never really happens. You betrayed me. He betrayed me at the end. I did also like the betray. last turn when it was necessary. Yeah. Um, but you wanted to betray me earlier than that, and you couldn't because you couldn't replace my guy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I also had a, an ability that I really liked. I could make any of the tiles whatever I wanted. Yeah. Lotus Climb. Which is really cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm giving, uh, like, I give Rising Sun an eight. It's, I like it. I've always liked it ever since I played it for the first time. I really liked it. Um, I'm trying really hard not to compare it to the other two. <laughs> <laughs> it's better well, than the other two. Anka's Trash. Ooh. And Ooh, I don't know about that. Anka's Trash. I don't care. I would equate this to Blood Rage for me. I don't personally. think I could list. I don't think I could list them. Honestly, I like them all. Really, I yeah. like them all a lot. Um, but anyway, this is a Rising Sun video. <laughs> <laughs> Rising Sun Eight. I really like it. Again, very pretty. Like you said, easily the best looking one. Ugh. <laughs> very good looking. I like the combat. I like the the allyship. Your action can do things for other players that you have an agreement with um yeah out of the three this is the one you would get me to play mm, that's fair grand finale yeah um so obviously it's my number three um i'll just go ahead and lead off it's a it's another 9.5 for me i don't see a lot wrong again this is my scale not your scale your scale adjusts for points it's also his top three right? game again we've gone over this multiple times anyone who's seen these crazy videos that before, you like your number three that's like your so number high. your number three game <laughs> gets a ninety five percent. Wow. What a what a, what a crazy concept. Like oh, that's, we done oh my I've god. I've never thought of it as a percentage. But, yeah, well, that's what exactly what it is. In a, a nine point five out of ten is ninety five percent. That's an A on a test. It's not okay, even an A plus okay, yet. We're not okay. even at an A plus. Game, Exemplary. Game, game. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a lot of flaws. I don't think there's a lot of issues with the game itself. Um, really, the only thing I think comes up um, as far as a potential issue is is the players themselves. And what I mean by that is is that you can kind of create dynamics. The issue is the people that you play with. Well, if they have attitudes like that, absolutely. But that's true <laughs> of every game. Um, <laughs> well, stop playing games with me then, Kev. I so, can also say, out of all the times <laughs> that I've played this game, that has never happened. Okay, so ever. So for context, what happened? So there's this um, there's this monster called the Oni of Spite. What happened o was Kevin was a douchebag. <laughs> and whenever the Oni of Spite enters a province for any reason, the owner of the Oni of Spite, which was me in this case, steals to honor from all players who have higher honor. And I was at the bottom of the honor track pretty much the entire game. So I focused on basically just how can I move this Oni of Spider on? And honestly, I was not really trying to get the two of them. I was really trying to get him because he was winning. So I wanted to get his points. I wanted to steal his points and give them to me. But in the process, because he didn't have very many characters on the board, I could not get the Oni into a position. The only way I could do it was to go into the province that Sebastian and I think one of the two he was Me. in, and then back <laughs> to the other one that had the, the other, the, the other two in. people that in. had him and me. Yep. And 
So I literally would move back and forth between the two of them, just just at, sucking up all the points. And Dwayne literally had zero points. On I don't the think I, I don't think I broke five points for about two thirds of the game. Yeah, it was it was pretty bad. Um, <laughs> I mean, I absolutely i i tra- I tried trampling over their bodies in order to get to to, to first place, and I, it obviously didn't work. But it would have been way worse had I not um, pursued that because there just literally was no other way. Because he only had, I think, one guy on the board. I could have won. I don't I care. I, I I'm not going to just let you win because oh, I could have won. I had like, two guys in the same spot, and I also strategically didn't like because it's the you move whenever, like every mm-hmm. time you enter points. He was able to secure basically one of the kami that give you two free moves yeah. between every whatever. So Fujin. there's just an extra reason why he was yeah. able to steal so many points. Yeah, it was it was very convenient. Like it was a, it was one of those things. But I mean, obviously I picked Oni Spite because I also knew Fujin was in play, one of the seven kami. Um, but yeah, so at any rate, the, that's actually not the issue with the game, with the players. Um, no, so at different you. player counts, you could create situ- uh, situations where, so at odd number player counts for three and five you will always have one person who's not paired up in a team um and how the other players who are in um the the alliances in the first round and how they how they work through that in the second round if they don't work that other player in um that player can have a really 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 bad game and just have not a good time because they're never paired with anybody alternatively in games with two or six players you can also find situations where two people you know, just say, hey, we're going to be in an alliance the entire time. And it's not actually beneficial for either of the players to do that. There is more of a benefit. You can't play this at two out. people. No, no, four and okay, six. Four and six. You so said two and six? The pairs, yeah, no. So, um, and I've seen that quite I've seen that quite a bit where people are just like, hey, we were in an alliance the first time. It's really easy for us to just continue to like lean into this. Um, yeah. And that's just not the way the game is really intended to be played. Um there are good reasons to switch your alliances, um, namely being that um, there are seven mandate tiles that get played in a round, so not every player is going to get the same number of tile selection actions. Um, so being partnered with the person who has the first tile uh, is beneficial. Um, so um, it's, again, it's not it's not usually a good idea to just be stuck in one. So it's really the only thing, and that's a player oriented thing, and it's it's usually easy to talk people out of like, hey, like there's there's more benefits to to breaking things up and, and finding different alliances. And in our game, I was really impressed because each of us was allied with the other person at one point in time. Um so also in that game, it like it didn't really create opportunities for anybody to like really topple or attack somebody. Um, but no ties, everything is broken by honor. Um and honestly, one of the things that goes like table presence. I mean, these miniatures, every single one of them is absolutely phenomenal, absolutely amazing. Um, if you have all of the upgraded content, up the upgraded strongholds, all of the the glitzy pieces, the metal tokens, uh, the plastic Ronin, um, the plastic flags that go on the provinces, um, the upgraded mandate tiles, a little like hard acrylic yeah, tiles or acrylic, whatever uh, versus really nice. cardboard. Um like it's just everything is just it, the table presence is amazing. I have the the, the play mat um, is is phenomenal. Um, One of the best play mats I've ever seen. Yeah. Ever. I'm not a play mat person. I'm actually thinking of selling most of my play mats, but I will not get rid of this one. Um, but uh, I'm also like super intimidated to paint this one because you can kind of just see by like the dude on the box there, like everything. Like you think like Japanese art, right? It's a lot of stuff is very colorful. So I'm. Very intimidated. And the minis are highly detailed. Yes. <laughs> um, and huge. And there's a ton of additional content, of course, like all CMON campaigns. There was a ton of stuff. So you have um, all the additional monsters and whatnot. You know, there's an actual, you know, Gojira type, you know, monster. Um, there's, a, the there's another one where. Godzilla? Um, Gojira. Gojira in Japan. He's, uh, I think he's, what is, I don't remember what his name is in the game. I think he might Godzilla? just be. I think it might. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, the Kami, there's another, all the expansions. There's so much fun stuff you can do with this. Um, there's a lot of, just, yeah. So. Fucking pandas. <laughs> yes, there is a, there is a warrior panda, um, in one of the expansions. Kung Fu Panda. It is a Kung Fu Panda. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um. Modeled so, after Jack Black himself. Indeed. 
So all in all, it's just for me. Is, again, this is you know, there's just not much to critique, uh, in my opinion. Um, so that's why it's uh, that's why it's yeah, it's great, and it's got a lot of uh, a lot of memories and stuff where people have played it with. So yeah. like Aww. Dwayne getting smashed for three hours. <laughs> I've never seen that before ever. That was I felt. I mean, I felt. I didn't feel bad. I felt a little bad. In you man. I feel a little bit. I felt a little bad. I mean, at some point, I think when I, when I bottomed Dwayne's score to zero, I was like, ooh. That is rough. That's yeah, and this was like a. This damn, was like, that sucks. This was like at the eighty percent. That's so bad. I'm so sorry. What what really sucked was because I couldn't take any more points from him. Because <laughs> I couldn't get points if I didn't take them from him. He didn't have there, any to yeah, give. Yeah, there's nothing to steal. No. You know? Do you hear this, man? Whatever, bro. Get Anyways. you beat up. See me in Onk. <laughs> no, thank you. And that's the our Egyptian Battle of the Games sense. review for Rising Sun, a Simon game by Eric Lang. And you will see this and Steven? us again in the rankings video a long time from now. <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody.